Most people may not even realize that South Mountain Speedway exists, but this little racetrack has been a family favorite for generations. And as Fox 10's Ashley Rodriguez reports, it now faces the risk of being demolished by the city. The South Mountain Speedway, it's been tucked into the landscape for decades, but now after years of use, it's in need of repairs costing $1 million. The city of Phoenix doesn't want to pay the bill. Environmentalists want the speedway out of the preserves and the land restored to its natural habitat. But parents who use it say this is one of the last racetracks for their kids to use. They're called quarter midgets, the handmade cars Phoenix kids have been racing since they were as young as six years old. With them like asking what sport do I play and I always say I race cars and they're like that's not a sport and I say well it is a sport. The South Mountain Speedway is the oldest racetrack in Arizona and the only racetrack in Phoenix. A lot of kids this is the only thing they have. And after more than six decades of sitting at the base of South Mountain the city of Phoenix is considering demolishing it. The Parks and Rec Department ended their lease with AJ's nonprofit, Valley of the Sun Quarter Midget Association, and surveyed the facility, finding it unsafe and in need of a million dollars of repairs, a topic at the most recent meeting. As a result of that, we, as the city, did decide to disconnect the power in January of 2024. The association says it's offered to make repairs and raise money to address the city's concerns. But the city says the need is beyond what the nonprofit can afford. And while Parks and Rec is considering allowing a private entity to repair and run it, the other option is to just demolish it and restore the land to its natural habitat, something environmentalists support. I've been around a lot of racing and a lot of racing families, and this use is not appropriate today. I can understand when it was done at the time, but um, it's ancient lands. But they said this is a, a different time and age and racing does not belong in the park. And we were like, well, this has been in the park before it became a preserve and that's what we stand by. There's nowhere else for these kids to go. The city says the Gila River Indian community and Salt River Pima Indian community support demolition, but the tribes could not be reached for comment. AJ and the 50 or so parents and kids who use the track during the September through May season are hoping to get another sit down with city officials to try to save the speedway and the sport of racing in the metro area, but are losing faith. Especially when they didn't really even seem to have a plan to even try to relocate us or give us any kind of bridge from this track. It's, nope, we're going to demolish it and leave you guys hanging. Right? There was no, like, okay, hey, we're getting rid of this. It'd be like going to a baseball field where kids play Little League and demolishing it and saying, eh, sorry. The city of Phoenix knows it needs to make a decision fast because they say the cost of repairs will only go up the longer the speedway sits here abandoned. At South Mountain, Ashley Rodriguez, Fox 10 News. Now at five, a monsoon alert. Strong thunderstorms are making their way through the valley. These videos were just sent to Fox 10 moments ago in Mesa. Strong storms have brought a lot of rain and even street flooding, as you can see there. And here's how fast these storms develop. The National Weather Service says the main threat is 60 mile per hour winds. So again, if you are in the path of these storms, go inside and seek shelter. These are very dangerous conditions to be out in the open. And here comes the rain. When the dust settled, behind it came thunderstorms. Here's a look at the East Valley earlier getting just pounded by water there. Let's go now to Fox 10's Nicole Christine, who's live in the East Valley. Nicole, what are you seeing right now? Well, hey, Ashley, we are in the Scottsdale area. We're actually passing through. You can see the overpass of the 101 right now. So we are seeing a little bit of rain right now. We have seen a little bit of flooding on some of the roadways um, going past. Our car kind of hit a little bit of the water, um, but nothing too drastic. It seems like over here, at least, that first round that you showed the video of was kind of the worst of it that's happened so far. There is some dark clouds that are happening a little bit more over to the east. So we've been watching those as we've been heading north. Um, I will say that we did see some lightning strikes as well. And we did also, um, again, have some rain. You could see a little bit of raindrops still coming down on our windshield. So it seems like right now the big thing is just keeping track of those lightning strikes that were happening in the area. Um, we're hearing a little bit of thunder there too. So 
Things are still definitely active. Luckily, though, we haven't noticed much damage out here in the Scottsdale area. Of course, we're welcoming any video or photos that people want to send us to show any damage they might have experienced. That way we can maybe bring some awareness to the area that maybe saw some more damage. Um, but we will definitely continue to drive around, see if we can see anything else. And uh, we'll check back in with you if we find anything super active. All right. Thank you so much, Nicole. Keep your eyes peeled for us. We're going to go now to a live driving shot from our photographer, Brian Hertzberg, who's also in Mesa, where they're seeing a lot of rain come down and some thunderstorm activity. Do we have his feed that we can go ahead and take the live shots of what he is seeing? As you can see, those dark clouds right there, and you can see the rain just coming down. It looks ominous out there. So now this is a live look from our photographer, Brian Hertzberg, who is in Mesa, and you can see See that heavy cloud cover over his car there so we are expecting some activity in fact let's go ahead and take radar right now so we can see where the storms are moving to next uh, we have been tracking a lot of moisture coming down in the high country flagstaff seeing quite a bit of rain now all of these storms start picking up around three they are expected to last until eight o'clock scattered showers and thunderstorms moved southward across pinal county into northeast maricopa county so if you're living over there you know about the strong winds that swept through much of the phoenix area winds were gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour especially across the east valley there now a few strong storms will be possible throughout the rest of the afternoon and right now as we are looking at the outage map we are finding that there are more than 3,000 outages in maricopa county and aps has already put out an alert saying they are already Already working on it. So again, this is a live look right now at the downtown Phoenix area where it's gray and cloudy out there. Currently, the temperature is 101 degrees. We want to get straight to that radar so we can see what's going on storm wise. You can see there's a lot of activity in the high country there, especially off to the east. So that could be moving over into the Flagstaff area. Flagstaff Prescott, Camp Verde, if you live over there, Ash Fork, just prepare, especially Holbrook and uh, Payson also potentially could get some activity. And then as we look uh, over in the valley area, Cave Creek getting hit. Fountain Hills, they have some serious thunderstorm activity. In fact, they are under a flood advisory until about 7.30 tonight. You can see just west of the Phoenix metro area, they're probably seeing some thunderstorm activity as well and some uh, scattered showers. So we're going to keep our eyes peeled on this throughout this hour. Just keep it right here. If anything changes regarding worse weather conditions or damage or more outages, we will keep you updated. But again, if you're right there over at the 101 west of Fountain hills you're really taking the brunt of it as it continues to move westward and it looks southwest like it's moving southwest as well a man detained after police say he crashed his car into a buckeye apartment this was scary stuff a lot of damage but luckily nobody was badly hurt fox 10's lindsay regas joins us live near baseline in miller roads tonight with the story lindsay John and Christina, there is a lot of damage out here and not just to the apartment complex. The car actually went through a brick wall before landing and hitting the apartment complex. You can see a car sized hole right next to the building and the crash didn't stop there. Instead, the car caught air, hitting the first story on this apartment and back patio, causing extensive damage. As you can see, the back patio was completely taken out by the car. Windows were shattered. A chunk of the apartment building is missing on both sides of the patio and right on the patio is a downed water heater. There's even some damage to the second story apartment. Now the car ultimately landed here. There's extensive damage to the front of the car. The windshield is shattered and airbags were deployed. It scared the living daylights out of me. Terry Johnson was sitting at her kitchen table when a car came crashing into her apartment. I had glass all around me on the table, the floor. And all I could do was scream. Her son Ivan Davis also lives at Toya Ranch Apartments near Baseline and Miller Roads. Davis says he was on the back patio when he heard screeching tires. And shortly after, he saw the crash. I stuck my head over the railing just as the car was coming right through the brick wall. And it, it hit my mom's apartment as well as our next door neighbors. Uh, flying, flying debris. 
all over. He then jumped the wall to help a woman and man who were inside the car. No one inside Terry's apartment was hurt, but Buckeye police say neighbors in other apartments suffered minor injuries from broken glass. It sounded like thunder and then the the wall got pelted by uh, like debris. We are still working to learn more about the driver. We know he was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Please tell us the driver was speeding. Reporting live, Lindsay Rakes, Fox 10 News.